You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. And now get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back with your first of your bi-weekly doses of the option block with the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the options insider.com as well as from the network upon which we are commencing our broadcast week. Hope you all had a great weekend out there. Hope you enjoyed all the content we put out last week. More to come this week, even though I am making my way down to yet another Southern studio for the OIC conference. This time going to be in Nashville. this week. That should be interesting, but you'll be getting an interesting assortment of content throughout the week. Don't you worry, folks. And of course, if you do like what you hear, keep throwing stars our way, whether it's on the OB feed and network feed, or where you get our mobile app. All of those help people discover the content at the end of the day, and that is the name of the game, after all. And then, of course, if you want to discover more content for yourselves, and who can blame you in these crazy trying times, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Giveaways, live streams, 200-plus exclusive episodes already at your fingertips. What more do you want out of life? Uh, all sorts of fun there, theoptionsinsider.com. Flash Pro is the place to go as we go around the horn. See who is joining us on the... Actually, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's our kickoff show. We're launching the network yet again for the week here. So <laughs> let's do it the way we are want to do it. Let's, let's get the old blood flowing, get the juices flowing. Let's wake up a little bit for the week, have a little bit of fun. It is time for our 80s wrestling trivia game. All right. Listeners, I'm joined on the show today by the unclest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Manager, as well as the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. They both are primed on their buzzers, ready to say buzz. No buzzing until I unmute you. Any pre-buzzing doesn't count. I don't want to hear the complaints. Those are just buzzes that are lost to the ether. I had a good time. I was giving Uncle Mike a hard time. I had a good time in his neck of the woods this week. There is this enormous... Enormous, the biggest in the country, apparently, collectibles and vintage toy show right literally in his town, St. Charles. People come from all across the country to go to this thing. It's only open for like one day, eight to three on Sunday. It's crazy. 50 years this thing has been running. And I went out there this weekend, had a ball, just 
Talk about the intersection of all things awesome that is 80s on the vintage side, plus sprinkle in a healthy dose of 80s wrestling. <laughs> it was amazing. It was awesome. And Uncle Mike, it's it's literally in his backyard. Can't be bothered to go. Uh, but the rest of the country was there. It was pretty freaking crowded. I was stunned how many people were there. Uh, but it was pretty cool. And I did have a delicious Skippy's Gyro and Lemonade. Uh, so I, can't, I did make it back to our long-standing sponsor slash non-sponsor here of the show. <laughs> so fun stuff. I'll give Uncle Mike a little bit of a hard time about that. During the show, did I see an actual rocking horse from the 80s that was actually a battle cat? I, I didn't know this thing even existed. There were like only three ever made in existence. The guy wanted like $1,500 for it. <laughs> did I buy it? Hell no. Did I see it and think it was the coolest thing ever? And whatever kid had that in the 80s was pretty damn lucky. Yes, I did. People were flocking with it, taking pictures. Did I hold an actual vintage Macho Man wrestling buddy from the 80s in my hands? Yes, I did. Uh, did they pay the guy whatever hundreds of dollars he wanted for it? No, I did not. <laughs> but there was tons of that stuff out there. Which reminded me, we'll get our question of the week and I'll give Uncle Mike more of a hard time. Our, our question this week. Roddy Roddy Piper, Barry, of course, iconic 80s wrestler. He is not the subject of our question this week, but I bring him up because they just announced Mattel makes exclusive stuff on their website. They release in small amounts and they sell out very quickly. And they do a lot of 80s wrestlers up there and they're doing a lot of two packs. They just did Jake the Snake and Ravishing Rick Rude. And they just come out with another two pack. It's going to be Roddy Roddy Piper. He looks amazing. I want to get it just for Roddy. And then the other half of this two pack, which I'm even more excited about, which you never ever see a figure of is George the Animal Steel. Uh, so that alone, any, any figure of George the Animal Steel, I'm probably going to want that in my collection. My question for you two, get your buzzers ready. George the Animal Steel would come to the ring with a stuffed animal. What was the name of George the Animal Steel's stuffed animal, which is included in that set, I should say. It's like a koala-looking bear thing, kind of beaten up. No buzzes? Man, you got... Nobody knows George the Animal Steel's stuffed animal? I, love I, I know more. I know other things about George the Animal Steel. <laughs> That's like the most iconic Why? thing. He had the tongue, like the green tongue. He would eat the turnbuckle, and he would hug yeah. his, his stuffed bear, whose name was Mine. Huh. Yeah, it said Mine on yeah. it. Mine. <laughs> now, I can tell you some other things about All George right, the Animal so I'll tell you what. For, you guys missed the big question. How about... A half bonus points. Whoever is the first to buzz in and then tell me like a significant match or feud or event of George Animal. So you get half a point. Buzz. Okay. Tucson, go ahead. All right. So a couple things about George the Animal Steel. He was actually friends with Ned Bennett, the co-founder of Options Express. George was from Detroit. Uh, George, uh, of course, he had the green tongue and the he used to eat the turnbuckles. Uh, George the Animal Steel is actually a born again Christian and is uh, uh, he's one of the few wrestlers that's somewhat sane uh, from the, the, all that nonsense back in the 80s. And um, yeah, he's just an all around good guy from everything. Well, Mike, did you also know that he happens to be in the Michigan High School uh, Coaches Football Hall of Fame and that he was a high school uh, science teacher, uh, but he coached the football team in uh, outside of Lansing. And is a member of the Michigan University uh, of the uh, Michigan State of Michigan High School Football Hall of Fame. Very impressive. I think we both should get a half point for that, Mark. Look at you arguing for half points for both. We'll tell you what, I'm in a generous mood here. I'll give you both a half point, even though I'm very disappointed you don't know mine. I always wanted a mine as a little kid. Uh, so there you go. No points for mine, half points for each of you for your random George the Animal fact. I should take away two sauce points because he didn't go to this massive uh, 80s spectacular that was in his backyard as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block. And before we dive into all this fun markets goodness, which again, is another one of these kind of where will we go today kind of days here. <laughs> Listen, we've had a lot of these of late. Uh, Uncle Mike Tussaud talking about the intersection of 80s, the two things I know you love, 80s, so Masters of the Universe type things, as well as 80s wrestling, WWE. I guess some of the things I picked up at this event. There was a line Mattel came out with not that long ago, but five or six years ago. I'd heard about a couple of them, but I, I missed out. They were only in stores for a brief period. It was called 
masters of the WWE universe. Can you guess where I'm going with this? I believe, I think Rowdy Piper was actually a an agent for Cobra for a while. And I think that um, there was actually some Rowdy Piper Cobra action figures. That might have been I, true. But, I, I'm talking about the about the about the Motu overlap because I, I picked up this weekend a pretty sweet Macho Man at Arms. So it literally was Macho Man yeah. Randy Savage as Man at Arms. Pretty awesome. It's on my desk right now. I got a Ricky the Dragon Steamboat Dragon Blaster Skeletor thing, <laughs> and a whole bunch. Of, I got a Manny faces with a bunch of '80s wrestlers in there in his faces. This line was a, was who a did, gift to this show, and it, it only existed make, for a short like, time. Who was He Man? Uh, he Man, I forgot. I, I'll have to go see who that. I think there was the Ultimate I, Warriors in there. There's like Terror Claws, Triple H. They have some '90 guys in there too. I uh, can't imagine they made He Man Hulk Hogan because th- you know he's so on the outs with he, WWE. He is kind of a controversial fellow these days, but yes, there was. Uh, I forgot who He Man was. Might have been Ultimate Warrior actually because he kind of fits that mold. There's a couple, and they reused a couple of the guys. Ultimate Warrior had a few. There's a couple of Triple H's in there. There's a couple other ones. But yeah, I, I was kind of scouring. That was my thing I was scouring the show for. So I have my assortment of Masters of the Universe WWE guys from the 80s <laughs> has grown as a result of my trip to St. Charles. So thank you, St. Charles, for making me spend a lot of money. But it was, it was fun. And the, hey, the euros were quite delicious. All right, to the markets we go. And if you have your own stories about the intersection of 80s wrestling and 80s pop culture, hit us up, listeners. Uh, the markets... Kind of doing the same thing they've been doing for a while now, listeners. Starting, trying to go a little bit in one direction, trying to move away from this 41 half, 41 30 level we've been hanging out at forever. And then they eventually, almost inevitably, it seems like, get sucked in the other direction. And then we hang out kind of unched. And that's pretty much what we're doing right now. S&P off a whopping five handles, listeners. Uh, about a little over a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ off a little over half a percent. The Dow quite literally unched on the day. All this means most of our Vol friends are kind of, eh, kind of shrugging their shoulders. Uh, VIX, when we kicked off the show, was at about a 17, 20, up about six tenths of a point. I'm sure if we keep hanging out here doing nothing, uh, we'll be right back down at a 16 handle before long. If we haven't even gotten there, right? Not quite there yet, but we're looking like we're on that trajectory today. VIX still looking frothy at about a 96, listeners. That's down a whopping one point, so still holding firm out there. So all that juice we were talking about making its way into uh, the put wing out there. Obviously still holding up. VXX 39.30, up about a tenth of a point, so kind of unched there as well. Uh, UVXY 380, literally unchanged since our last show. SVX 18 and three quarters, also literally unchanged from our last show. UVX 12.10, oh, literally unchanged from our last show. And VolQ is at a 20 when we kicked off the show. Oh, yeah, what's that word? Unchanged from our last show. So, a whole heck of a lot and not much going on out there listening. Maybe we need to add a uh, trading of 80s vintage collectible section to the show. What do you guys think? Oh, I mean, I'm not much of a collectible guy. I mean, I just I still have my stuff from the 80s, but um, I guess I'm just about the memories. Tell you what, if we all go in and chip in for that $1,200 Battle Cat Rocking Horse, think we could flip it and get three, five grand. What do you think? Now, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> What what kid wants a battle cat rocking horse? He man is loved by people yours and my age, not so much by kids Valentino's age. I will say, oh no, he's all over the toy aisles again. You go to like a Walmart, oh I know, all master stuff everywhere. It's all in the kid. Actually, you know what? That's a point. Valentino sees it and then he's like, oh, I want that. And I'm like, no, Daddy's gonna play with that, (laughs) (laughs) Daddy. But you buy it for him, but then you take it. That's 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 the difference there. Yes. Yeah, I will take that macho man at arms, please. He's coming with me. <laughs> All right, Mr. Meatball, what's catching your eye out there in the, another paint drying type of day, sir? Yeah, interesting day. You know, it looked like we were going to be uh, have a pretty nice day. Uh, S&P off. The VIX was looking like it was going red. And then they came in and they really sold the mega caps. Um, Microsoft in particular, uh, which was, you know, already down a little bit on the day, dropped at one point down eight bucks. Um, the Amazon went from up on the day to down. Apple has been kind of floating in a range. Uh, Google Meta is down. Google's the only one of those, the, those groups that are up ahead of earnings. Maybe not surprising. You, you see a little bit of profit taking before we get the kind of bathed in tech earnings tomorrow. Um, a lot of, lot of strength in energy 
today. Um, Exxon's up 2%. Uh, Chevron is up 1.5%. Um, a lot of oil and gas names are, are moving higher. That's kind of putting a floor in the Dow. Uh, you know, the, the NASDAQ, like, as you said, is about down half a percent. The Dow unched. Uh, and that's putting the S&P and the Russell 2000 kind of smack in the middle. Um, kind of I- interested to see whether we have this this continued pattern of uh, kind of getting some selling in the morning and then they buy it up or whether the the selling actually can get a little bit of fall through today. And maybe we have a, a, a inside day that is actually directional and maybe we close toward the bottom of our range. I, I, I'm not fully sure yet, but uh, the market definitely looks, uh, feels a little bit heavier today. Uh, we've had, we've been so strong lately, maybe, you know, a, a, a healthy pullback maybe makes a little bit of sense here, um, ahead of, you know, these giant, giant earnings that start tomorrow. You have a lot of names popping off this week. So hopefully we won't see the paint drying uh, tomorrow out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What is catching your eye out there in a mostly paint drying type of day? Yeah, I would agree on the paint drying. Um, in looking at this, uh, we're waiting. What are we waiting on? I'm still not convinced the market's waiting just on earnings. It could just be waiting longer on the Fed, but who knows? Uh, we, we could be waiting on uh, earnings coming out. You never know with that. Um, <clears throat> the one non-paint drying thing uh, that I'm seeing today, we have to go to the paint dry section to see the excitement, and that is the bonds are being bought up. Um, having a little bit of a rally in the 10 years. So we are getting a little bit of movement there. Nothing too crazy by any means, but uh, something to where it's uh, non-paint drying within the paint dry section of what we look at. Uh, and of course, along with energy, energy is up on the day uh, as well as Mark had mentioned. Um, I, I think we're just in a wait and see mode for this market at this stage uh, overall. And um Depending on where we go uh, with earnings, will be the de- or with the Fed, uh, market's waiting on something, and so uh, you know it's a slow day when um, just looking at Bitcoin, uh, that's really hasn't even moved on the day. So you know it's a slow day. So uh, that's what's happening today, and that's what I'm seeing. Some might say out in St. Charles that Bitcoin really sucks. Dot com. That's that's what I heard. So a lot of people rocking that T-shirt out there, sir. I saw bumper stickers on cars. Bitcoin really sucks. Dot com. You're, you're making. Your presence known out there, sir. I, I mean, that's just the way it goes out here in St. Charles. We believe that Bitcoin really sucks. We'll say there was a lot of a lot of country out there in St. Charles. A lot of open land. I'm not used to you such were, you're, broad you're, you're, expanses. You are, <laughs> you are literally right on the very ed- where, where you're at. That's literally the very edge of suburbia. There is. Uh, that's pretty much where where the western border of suburbia ends is where you were. Yes, I could I could definitely tell when I crossed that threshold because all of a sudden there was a lot of land for days and not much else out there. Once you get past the skippies, not too much. Not too when much. you're west, you, you, when you're west of Randall Road, which is where you were, Randall Road's kind of the what I would describe the ed, pretty much the edge of suburbia, at least in this area. The edge of civilization, some might call it. But uh, we, I digress. A conversation. For another day, sir. The lovely, the scenic lands of St. Charles out there. Why Uncle Mike has so much time to focus on you folks out there when he's managing money. No distractions out there in the hinterlands of St. Charles. Except for once a year or so when this big show comes to town. Must be crazy with people in St. Charles. The population of the town must triple for the for the weekend that this show is in town. All these strangers. Must be weird. Uh, all right, let's keep on rolling out here. Out to the big markets. Let's see what's weird and strange and perhaps wonderful out here in the markets today. And if you said not a ton, you probably would be correct, except for, uh, you know, the land of the S. We'll get there in a second. Spy and the S always manage to put up numbers, even on these kind of quiet days out here. Uh, VIX right now looking kind of about par for the course, 355,000 contracts. Uh, that ADV took another hit since our last show. Listen, it's down about 50,000 contracts from Thursday. It's down to 693. So back below 700,000 again. Again, still 700,000 for the S. That's nothing to sneeze at. It was around half a million not too long ago. So it's still looking robust in comparison to that. But of course, back away from the almost 900,000 that it was threatening for a brief period there. Everyone who watches VIX knows almost a million contracts a day. Not exactly sustainable and kind of coming back off that now, at least until this next shoe that the market is waiting for drops. Is it earnings? Is it some other 
iteration of what's going on with the Fed. Who knows? But we're clearly waiting for something out there right now. SPY, about four and a half, almost 4.6 million contracts. So again, more than half of its ADV already, which is right around 8.2. Uh, so the SPY ADV has remained robust and not surprising. SPY can put up numbers even when there's tumbleweeds blowing through the rest of the market. Uh, the S, same deal these days, 1.35 million. Everyone loving those zero-day contracts, keeping the S afloat in a day when it otherwise probably would have six or 700,000 contracts going up out there. Uh, the ADV, 2.6 million right now. So still looking pretty robust. A little bit down below that 3 million level, which is also borderline unsustainable out there. Uh, the small caps, IWM, 347,000. They keep having days like this where they're doing 300, 200, 400,000 contracts by this point of the show, even though their ADV is 1.1 million. Somehow they managed to sustain that ADV, even though they're not really putting up the numbers, it seems like. Manage it, but say la vie, small caps, 1.1 million. That's a lot for IWM to put up, but so far that's where they're hanging out right now from an ADV perspective. Doesn't seem like they're going to hit it today, but hey, we shall see. And the Qs, 1.7 million. Uh, that ADV has actually fallen below 3 million. Shocking. Stunning. 2.85 million. <laughs> Even though the Q is also a day that ends in Y, they're going to put up some numbers. Well, let's see what's going out there from a small name, single name, kind of micro perspective out there. Listen, let's, let's sink our teeth into something fun instead of all this uh, paint drying on the index side. And you know what? It looks like a pretty active day on the single name front. Cost you almost 230,000 contracts to break into the top 10. So that's, again, not nothing. It's not over 300K like we like to see on a busy day, but it's not below 200K either. So we're moving in the right direction there. That gets us to perennial top 10 offender these days, Microsoft. Ever since the Activision deal, and then now, of course, with this second leg of this AI war that's going on, Microsoft has kind of been just a almost permanent resident of our top 10 after having been excised out of it for the better part of the last decade out there. Microsoft hasn't been a big player until really the last year and change out there in terms of, for us at least on the show, talking about them on a regular basis. Off about five and a half handles today, nearly 2%. So this name can sell off. <laughs> it's just been a little while, isn't it? 280 and about a quarter right now, well north of their 52-week low. They set not too long ago, about 213 and a half listeners. And not that far away from the 52-week high of 294.18, even though a little bit farther away. Today, obviously, number nine, I guess the bell has finally tolled for Bed Bath & Beyond listeners. We were talking about it on the show last week. It seemed like they were circling the bowl, but we've said that before about Bed Bath & Beyond. They have managed to survive, but now the bell has tolled Bed Bath heading to the great beyond out there. They have declared bankruptcy. A stock, 18 cents right now, down 11 cents. <laughs> Might be surprised it's worth that much right now, listeners. It got as high as 24 cents today for a little while out there but yeah going the way of the dodo 231,000 contracts on the tape for that one got to wager a lot of puts on the tape even though how many puts are, are left to be done when you're below the half strike a lot of action on the half put strike i'm guessing coinbase number eight you know they've been making a lot of headlines lately we're going to leave the u.s if gary gensler has his way and that's a kind of an old saw a lot of people play that card we see here in chicago Cbo and cme have both played that we're leaving chicago card so We'll see if Coinbase wants to leave its biggest market out here, but it's selling off today. 54.83 off about four and a quarter, a little over 7%. Good for 233,000 contracts. And the number eight spot on our countdown today, number seven, AMD chip zone coming a little early today. About a quarter of a million contracts for them. AMD off one and a quarter, trading 87.15 right now. Once again, putting fuel to my theory that there is a lot of symbol confusion out there number six right behind it amc two hundred eighty-five thousand contracts selling off about a quarter trading right around four and three quarters right now amc again good for two hundred eighty-five thousand contracts and the number six spot today number five we've got good old first republic three hundred and one thousand contracts uh, they have their earnings looks like today after the bell 15 and three quarters getting a nice lift today up about one and a half bucks so nice pre-earnings move, I suppose, out here. Interesting, interesting action for them. Good for 301,000 contracts. Number four, right where it usually is, it's NVIDIA, the other half of the chip zone, 340,000 contracts. 269 even is where it's trading right now, off a little over two, about $2.20 right now. Again, number four on our countdown today. Number three, 
Yes, back down at number three, it's the Fruit Company. Only 414,000 contracts on the tape for them today. So no action for Apple really today. But then again, the market doesn't like when Apple's red, and it's still red right now off about a quarter. It's like they've had a nice little range today. So 165.5 to the upside, 163.89 to the dark side. They have been trying to rally it pretty much ever since we started the show. <laughs> it's gone from 164 to about 164 and three quarters right now. We'll see if it can turn green again on the day out there. A number two, the Amazonian sneaking into the number two spot, 458,000 contracts on the tape today. 106, pretty much even for them, off about 90 cents for the Amazonians. And then number one, you know what it is. Day that ends in Y. It's going to be the old Teslas here. 1.35 million, so about a normal day for them. 1.35 million, though it's a disrespectable number, all things considered. A 160 and a quarter, so continuing their sell-off that they started last week with their uh, numbers not exactly blowing the doors off out there. Off of nearly five bucks again today, or about almost 3%. So yeah, this uh, last five days, we've seen Tesla off almost 15%, or about 27 handles. It was trading almost 190. Now here we are, about 160 here. So yeah, rough, uh, rough five days here for good old Tesla. But that gets us back to the earnings front, listeners. And hey, you know, maybe we could find some fun stuff to sink our teeth into. If you can't find something that interests you on the earnings front this week, you really just aren't trying. Man, it's an embarrassment of riches this week. Tons of big names popping off this week. Let's get a quick rundown here. Today, we've got good old Mr. Buffett's favorite beverage, Coca-Cola popping off today. We got Phillips today, Whirlpool after the bell today as well. Tomorrow, now we're getting into it, listeners. Verizon before the bell, UPS before the bell, Halliburton. Before the bell, Mickey D's and GE before the bell and 3M and PepsiCo. So if you want the other half of the Cola Wars, just wait until Tuesday. And then Spotify and Raytheon. That's all before the bell even freaking rings, listeners. And then we've got after the bell, good old softy. We've got Alphabet. We've got Visa. We got Chipotle, Juniper. Uh, you name it out there. Just, uh, again, an embarrassment of riches. If that's not enough for you. Wednesday, we got our friends across the street. Not sure for how much longer, though. It's Boeing before the bell, Hilton before the bell on Wednesday. ADP Hess, the old Hess trucks. Kids still want a Hess truck under the tree for Christmas. I don't know many kids who do, but I think they still sell. Who knows? <laughs> They're popping off. Maybe we'll find out on Wednesday before the bell, as well as ADP and General Dynamics. And then after the bell, another one of our frequent offenders. It's Meta. Right behind, we also have another former frequent offender. That's Roku. They were a perennial top tenner for a while there. They've kind of been kicked to the curb of late. Maybe they'll make it back in with their earnings on Wednesday, listeners. Just so many names popping off. Then Thursday, the parte continues. American before the bell. Southwest before the bell. Lily before the bell. Crocs, rubber shoe ball before the bell. MasterCard, again, all before the bell and Merck. Then after the bell, we got the Amazonians and Intel, my old stomping grounds, as well as Gilead and Amgen. Snap, you name it. Friday, we got Exxon and Chevron. And a whole bunch of other fun popping off on Friday. So, listeners, just an embarrassment of riches out here. Luckily for you, because we like you folks, we got updated earnings move, earnings move results, <laughs> earnings season, and earnings trades reports. Let's look here really quickly. We've got GM before the bell tomorrow. They're trading thirty three and a half when we ran this report. They're pricing in a buck seventy three in the past. They've moved the buck forty five. So, man. A little bit extra juice out there. PepsiCo, Cola Wars. What they got cooking? Let's see. For the bell, 185 and a half is where they were trading. 365 is what they're pricing in. Listeners, in the past, they've moved exactly $2.50. So that's a fair amount of extra juice for good old PepsiCo. I wonder what's lurking in them, Thar Hills. Verizon, 37 and a third. They're pricing in a buck 40. In the past, they've moved 90 cents. So similar deal here. Substantially more juice for Verizon. Let's keep the before the bell party going. Let's go out to Thursday, though. Let's go out to Southwest Airlines. Uh, thirty-two fifteen is where they were trading. They're pricing in a buck forty-four. In the past, they moved ninety cents. They look, they look almost exactly like Verizon from a before and after perspective on straddles. And uh, the stock not that far away either. Only five dollar difference. So Verizon and Southwest Airlines trading with surprising synchronicity out there. If you want to see the full season for yourselves, listeners. Uh, we have updated it now with 70 names reporting. 
And we're still hanging out at a pretty robust level. 143% is where we're hanging out right now. Again, that's going to come in. It's inevitable. We can't maintain this. But it's fun to see in the early blush out there. By the way, speaking of coming up, the long-term average has crept up to about a 96 now. So after languishing in the low 80s for the better part of the pandemic, finally starting to fight its way back to even now. So intriguing stuff. Will this be the cycle? That does it, listeners. Will this be the cycle that pushes us over the edge? Look how many names are pricing in a heck of a lot of extra juice. This could certainly be the one, listeners, in terms of earnings trades. We are monitoring 75 long straddles and 48 long calendars for your earnings trading convenience out there. Where do you go to find all this fun stuff? Because we like you, all free of charge, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab. To begin that voyage to the dark side as we keep our voyage rolling right along, right on into God Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the Odd Block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's begin our voyage to the dark side here. Let's fire up the old Eye of Sauron, see what it's got on the docket for us today. First up, maybe a newcomer to the eye block. If it's not, we haven't talked about it in quite some time. This is Sentinel-1, ticker symbol S. Love it. They got the single letter ticker out there, so good for them. Sentinel-1, this is a cybersecurity company. If you're not familiar with them, trading right now, 1776, excellent year. Maybe not the best stock price, especially if you're selling off nearly 90 cents in the wrong direction today or nearly 5%. So a bit of a rough day here for Sentinel-1 on the year. It looks like a pretty rough year as well, off nearly exactly 50%. A year ago, it was trading about 35 and a third, and they came for it almost right away. On May 11th, it was trading $19. So. Got cut almost in half <laughs> just in the span of a couple of weeks last year. Then they tried to rally it. They got it back up to looks like it's high after the all time high or the, the one year high back in May of last year with the secondary high, shall we call it, was back in September. They got it back up to about 29 and a third. And then that was all she wrote. It ran out of steam. And by December, it was trading 13 bucks again. Languished there for a while. Until March, really. It started rallying in March. Just in the last month or so, it's up 21%. So it's had a nice run up a little over three handles in the last month. So is this, uh, is this the moment? Is this the time when the rebound is in? Let's see what the Eye of Sauron has to tell us. All right. Now, listeners, we have somebody going out there in the June 20s. It looks like the answer might be yes, listeners. Someone looks like they're gobbling up the June 20s when we... Ran this, we saw 9,016 of the June 20s going up for $1. That is a 63 ball. The stock was actually a little actually a little bit higher. It was 1786. The stock's given up about a dime since then. Uh, but that hasn't stopped them from wanting these calls. They kept coming in for thousands more, thousands more, thousands more. Total of 26,000 of these June 20s have gone up now on the day, listeners. So a pretty active strike, a pretty active trade here for a name that's been kind of beaten up. Mr. Meatball, what's your spidey sense telling you? You think someone is looking for a return to the old ways here in Sentinel-1, sir? You know, it certainly could be um sentinel one i love that s is already gone so they they it used to be sprint yeah but yeah they, they grabbed is, it <laughs> uh, this thing was just in the toilet forever and ever and ever and then you know kind of kind of interesting interesting chart here definitely not not one uh i've looked at very often but yeah that's some uh is that so? Is it a call roll or is it a call overwrite? What was what was your take on this? Because there's some some May going up, and then a whole lot of June. Um, 
you know, looks like they started buying for a dollar and they really ran this thing higher. Um, so yeah, it looks like someone's looking for a move back to 2025, something like that. Yeah, there's like about 4,000 of the Junes have gone up today, but about almost 27,000. I'm sorry, 4,000 of the Mays and about 27,000 of the Junes have gone up today. So it does seem like it's a, a June call palooza going up out here. They were lifting these offers out here. It looks like a lot of them kept going. They went up for a buck fifteen. A couple of about a minute after this nine thousand lot went up as well. So they kept going up at higher and higher levels. It looks like they were they were buying. These are all opening, obviously here as well. So yeah, impressive upside. Looks like someone looking for the return to form. And you're right. That kind of threw me for a loop when I first saw that too. I was like, S is sprint back for a second. I, I had to run and check and see what we were talking about. I was like, oh no, some savvy firm gobbled that up. And it is now everyone's favorite name, Sentinel One. So there you go, listeners. The markets move on. The tickers stay the same at the end of the day, listeners. Let's go on out there to this one we talked about a little bit of late and all the rash of worry about contagion out there and the banking side. A lot of banks popping up on our radar these days, including New York Community Bank Corp, ticker symbol NYCB. Trading $9.22 right now, up about 20 cents, a little over 2% on the day. On the year, I have you take a guess, listeners, when their low for the year came. If you said back, oh, about a month ago, <laughs> you were correct. They hit 581 back then, but a year ago, they were actually trading $10.07. So at that point, they were cut almost in half for the year back in March. And then they uh, rallied it back up to where it is right now, nine and a quarter. Their actual high for the year is about $11 exactly. That came in August of last year. So interesting year. Mostly, I wouldn't say sleepy because they had some action, but mostly kind of a range-bound year until all this madness started in uh, February into March with this uh, Cajun fear. You got a nice little V-shaped sell-off and recovery here in this name and still hanging out there right now. And Mr. Mr. Meatball, someone's getting a little bit uh, fast and loose out here with the paper here in New York Community Bank Corp. They came in and said, you know what? This contagion thing, this thing is way overblown, even though it did did break the nine handle just this morning. It got to 897. So the nine handle is by no means a shoe in out here. And yet someone looks like they came in this morning just blasting away at these May 9 puts. Uh, looks like they sold 19,681 of them for 35 cents right on the bid. That is a 39 vol. The stock at the time was $9.12. What makes this more interesting, listeners, is that there is an earnings announcement between now and May expiration, which probably accounts also for a little bit of that juice they're getting in that put sale. So, yeah, that that adds a little bit of a wild card to this put sale. Mr. Meatball, they're not playing around. They're going straight at the money, slightly in the money earlier this morning puts, and doing so for size going into an earnings announcement. I guess they're saying contagion. What contagion, sir? Yeah, it's a pretty pretty darn aggressive sale, I got to be honest. Um, now, a few, uh, a few weeks ago, we saw a trader open up a huge position long, the eight puts. Uh, that's where that 36000 that's open there comes from. Uh, very interested that uh, we're seeing such, you know, massive, uh, such a massive put sell right ahead of earnings. Uh, it takes some, takes some intestinal fortitude to put that one on. So hats off to that trader. Uh, if they end up being right, they're gonna bring in thirty-five cents a lot of times. Uh, but uh, you know, it could be problematic for them if uh, if they end up being wrong. Before we go any further, my eagle-eyed producer here did find the answer to your question from earlier, Mr. Meatball, in that uh, Masters of WWE Universe line, the He-Man, because they couldn't go with Hogan, you're right, so John Cena was He-Man. So there you go. <laughs> uh, he came with an invisible battle axe and shield because, yeah. as you know, you cannot see him. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so Not John Cena. There you go. That, that, that doesn't exactly ring my uh, 80s wrestling uh, nostalgia bell, but I, under the circumstances, I think it makes sense at the time Hogan kind of persona non otherwise hogan obviously the shoe in yeah. for uh, for that one so there you go that's why i didn't know who it was because it was john cena not exactly in my wheelhouse let's keep on rolling let's go uh, to our final name we just talked about this name. i'm trying to see just last week let me see because we were going back listeners to the realm of pure 
storage. Yes. We just reviewed some line in the sand puts just on our last show in pure storage. Uh, this is ticker symbol PSGPG listeners. They make flash memory, flash storage devices. They're trading about twenty two ninety right now, off about forty cents on the year. They're off nearly eight bucks, or about twenty five percent. Their high for the year actually came back in February of about thirty two and a half bucks, and they got just annihilated down to $23 on March 13th. And then they rallied it again recently up to about $26 just last week before crushing it again. Now went from 26 bucks back down to about $22, 22 and change right now where we're trading. So the turbulence, I think I said this on the show last week is is flash, (laughs) flash memory. Now the new biotech out here, either way, this is a pretty volatile chart, but it looks like they're back on our radar again today. Listeners last week, we talked about someone writing the March 23 puts that was back on our March 2nd show. We were paying it off. So we talked about them a few times in the last month. They sold 7,000 of the March 23 puts for 44 cents. The stock was $24, pretty much even at the time. Uh, These went out worthless. So they pocketed a little over 300 grand on that trade. Uh, Today, they're going a different direction here with ESTG. There it is. Uh, We went out to, looks like a June vertical. We've got 4,000 of the June 26, 28 verticals going up. Looks like paper buying the 26s, selling the 28s. So pretty much as you would expect, doing it for about 36 cents. Listen, that's a 42 vol on the 26s. Similar vol, about a 40 on the 28s there. There are earnings in this. this they're on exactly the end of May, May 31st. So comes pretty late on the earnings front, but they have more juice beyond that. They go all the way out to June expiration. Uh, So kind of intriguing. Looks like it's opening on both legs. This is no roll going on here. This is just a straight up buying themselves some upside. Like I said, we're hanging out right now at about 23 bucks. So Mr. Meatball looks like somebody after blasting away at a bunch of puts and being right in this name, someone is coming out now to say a little bit of a June upside is the way to go, sir. What What do you think of this one? Yeah, interesting, interesting trade. But yeah, there, there's, uh, looks like they're looking for a pretty strong move back toward, uh, the 50 day moving average, which is around 26 and a half. Um, but yeah, there's a, a, a bunch of, uh, bunch of June calls going in a name that, uh, I, I think we can all agree does not usually trade very much. Yeah, not, uh, not a normal thing. You like this, listeners? June 26, 28. For thirty, it's only a two dollar wide spread. You're paying thirty six cents for it, so not a ton of money. But you're not exactly getting it for free either. The stock is pretty far away from that right now. It's at a little bit shy of twenty three. So you need a pretty decent pop by a June expiration for this thing to really make some sense for you. But maybe you like yourselves a little bit of flash storage. This name certainly has had a tendency to move of late. So maybe that convinces you, and maybe that makes you want this. I don't know. I'm curious. Hit us up if you're intrigued. As it's time for us to hit up Uncle Mike, because it is time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, everybody, welcome to the strategy block, the portion of the show. Uncle Mike takes the reins, dispenses some options, wit, and or wisdom. Uncle Mike, the question we all have at the top of your segment, before we even progress any farther, if you, you as Uncle Mike, were a Masters of the WWE Universe character, which one would you be? I could see you as a bit of a macho man at arms, you know, kind of steadfast. You know, you like yourself a good mace. Maybe you can pull off a good ooh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What what, what character do you envision yourself as, sir? I mean, I... So I guess if I'm He-Man, does that mean I have to be John Cena? Or does that mean that I get to be Uncle Mike He-Man? I don't know. This is our own universe. We can make up our own rules. Do you want to be John Cena, He-Man, Uncle Mike, a combination of all three? You want to be the face? That's what you want to be? No, I mean, I'm Uncle Mike, He-Man. I, I'm He-Man all the way. I mean, I'm, I've, I've been a power lifter as a, as a younger la- a younger man, and um, if I'm going to be Masters of the Universe, I'm going to be He-Man. All right. Interesting. I'm more of a trap draw guy myself, but hey, to each their own. Uncle Mike, sir, what do you got on the docket for us this week? <laughs> and ironically, when I first got married, my wife had a cat, and I renamed that cat Battle Cat. 
<laughs> Did you put a little little armor piece on his head when he ran around? <laughs> Did you paint him green? <laughs> nah, my wife didn't know me well enough at the time. I didn't want to try that. Otherwise, I probably should have. Now you got to get a cat painted green and put that on there. I want to see some pictures. Sir. Yeah, I do. Need to, we do have cats. I need to paint them green. But um, I don't know if my, I, I'd like to stay married, so I probably shouldn't. So um, anyway, but today I want to talk about selling garbage. Uh, so in other words, uh, I've talked about buying garbage in the past. So, so like, let's say that you're selling a put spread or you sell a call spread. And then you maybe just to, if you're worried about a big move over the weekend, but you don't want to close out your position, you can buy like a, on Friday, you can buy like a Monday call or put for a couple pennies and then you can sleep well over the weekend. And um, if you're wrong, you only lose a couple pennies. But if for some reason it comes true, then uh, you're not really in a bad spot because you have that garbage in place. But what I want to talk about is selling garbage and why you should really, uh, quite honestly, never do it. Um, so let's say, for example, that you're looking at a risk reward graph. And this is something that's fairly common when um, you see a newer option trader. You're like, oh, well, if I sell, if I'm looking at the probability chart, if I sell this call really far out of the money or this put really far out of the money, I mean, it's a 99% chance of success based upon the probability calculator that I'm using. And uh, I mean, what are really the odds of the market moving this much during this amount of time anyway? And um, most of the time, 99% of the time, that probably probability calculator is going to be right, I would say. But the problem is, is that high probability equals really bad risk reward typically. So in other words, let's say you're selling a naked call or a naked put for that matter, and it is just so far out of the money, meaning that you're just not going to, there's no way with which this option is going to get touched by expiration. But what if it does? If you're getting your few pennies for that and you're getting it week in, week out, month in, month out, whatever, and you're thinking of it as this uh, annuity stream. Well, you're going to be right most of the time, but the time that you're wrong, you're going to lose one year to three years worth of profits, depending on how high probability that you are. And so from there, what I would caution you in doing is that when you're selling far out of the money options, number one, I'd recommend not doing it. Uh, the only time that I guess I would do it is if you own a stock and you want to sell a very far out of the money covered call to where or if the stock did move that much, you know what, I'm fine selling it at that level. That would probably be the only time I would consider it. Um, but when doing it, understand that the higher the probability of the trade, the worse the risk reward is going to be. The lower the probability of the trade, the better the risk reward is going to be. So for example, let's say that you go ahead and you buy that garbage out of the money put the, or out of the money call for a couple pennies. Well. The odds of that actually working are astronomically against you. However, the risk reward is amazing. One penny can get you several hundred dollars. Uh, and that's very common in trades like that. However, the odds of doing it are not very well. Uh, so what I want to go with today is just have an understanding that your risk reward has an inverse correlation to your probability most of the time. And that is the strategy block for today. All right. We'll come up against us. Do a real quick mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, listeners. Today is the day of the day we've all waited for anxiously or perhaps not at all. Yes, today's the day. That SIBO is launching the One Day VIX. Do you care? Do you not care? I thought we'd put it up to you, the ultimate arbiter at the end of the day, the audience, to see what you folks are feeling. Right before showtime, we asked you, hey, One Day VIX launches this week. Do you think this short-term measure of volatility will be useful for your trading, or is it just another meaningless number to clutter up your trading screen? So yes, you like it. Maybe you trade short-term, or no, you think it's meaningless. I'm Mr. Meatball. Are you excited that today is the day? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for? Well, I, I don't think we're going to be trading it, but I think it'll be useful for gathering information on where 
short-term vols are moving and how one-day options are trading. Uh, so I, I definitely see some value in it. You vote for yes, it's useful. Okay. Yeah, it's useful. Interesting. And Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you. One day VIX, useful for your trading informative number or kind of another meaningless statistic to clutter up your screen? I don't know if it's going to be useful for me or not. I plan on looking at it. and I'm, I'm very intrigued by it. So I'm going to be in the I don't know camp. Um, but um, yeah, definitely intriguing and uh, something I'm going to spend some time looking at for sure. Don't know if I'll use it, though, in the long run. Well, our audience has spoken, at least in the short term. Now, it's only been live about an hour, listeners. You got the question of the week. So if you're listening to live, of course, you can vote to add any time. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you get over to add options throughout the week. Make your voice heard. We try to retweet it so you folks can find it if it isn't up there. It's pinned right now. Probably won't be pinned all week, but we have a lot of content hitting our Twitter feed, obviously, throughout the week. Uh, right now, 75% of you saying no. This is a meaningless number. It's just going to clutter up your trading screen. You want no part of it. Uh, 25% saying, yeah, you're intrigued. Maybe you trade short term. You you want to use this VIX for your analysis. So right now, the early voting is pretty strong, listeners. You agree? You disagree? Get in there. Add options. Make your voice heard as we keep going around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our big Thursday episode of the old OB. Mr. Meatball, we'll start with you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until our next episode? Earnings, earnings, earnings. That's uh, what we're going to be watching. We've got some big ones coming out between now and Thursday um, and that are really, I think, going to set the table for the market the rest of the, the, uh, you know, the rest of the year. A lot of earnings on the docket. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on till the Thursday episode? Uh, I'm also watching earnings, earnings, but not earnings, earnings, earnings. I'm, I'm only doing it two thirds as much, I guess. But um, watching that, seeing if that is the bus with which the market has been waiting for or to see if uh, the market's continuing to wait for the Fed. We will see. So just that's about it right now. It's also about it for the show listeners. But don't worry if you want more content in your lives. We're here for you. We'll be back in a little bit with the crypto rundown. Our old buddy, Mr. Bill, joining us. You know, he's pretty happy with the crypto levels we're seeing out there. Are you happy? I guess we'll find out. All sorts of fun joining us on the crypto rundown. Then, of course, I am heading down to the OIC conference this week. So the Thursday episode of the show uh, should be fun. I will be doing it live in person with the Flowmaster. So that'll be fun. Always, We did one. From SIBO here, and now we'll be doing one together from Nashville. So two episodes live with the Flowmaster. That's always a good time. So look forward to that. And Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks want to look forward to what you got cooking, where should they go? What should they do? Come to my office in St. Charles. I'll buy you a Skippy's Euro. No, uh, check out my website, stcharlesweltz.com. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. Um, and that's where you can find me. Take them up on the Euro. Pretty freaking good is all I'm going to say. Listen a little disappointed when the sign says lemonade. I was expecting an assortment of homemade lemonades. They were instead referring to their Italian ice, which was also quite good. I like that. Uh, but the lemonade was just like your typical Tropicana lemonade. <laughs> so I was expecting nice, a nice homemade lemonade, Uncle Mike. Not quite that, but the Italian ice was quite good. So they should more call it, you know, Skippy Zero is an Italian ice to clarify things for people. But hey, good stuff. I'll None. have to talk to old man Skippy. You do. And tell him also, where's my check? I've been plugging his damn restaurant for like a decade now. Where's my monies, as they say? <laughs> All right, I'll settle for in-kind compensation, a crate of euros a month. How about that? All right, we'll, Ooh, we'll, that go down, fair. we'll go down that road. All right. And Mr. Meatball, sir, I won't be seeing you next week, but I'll be seeing you in two weeks. Going to be doing some live OB with you in a couple of weeks. Sir. Are you excited? Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, come and check us out. Uh, and... Uh, Go to optionpick.com. I'm writing stuff on VIX and volatility just about every day. Come and check it out. And I'm excited, sir, because we were going to drop your prize in the mail the other week. And I thought, you know, it's more fun to hand it to him in person so I could see his face. So you will be awarded your major award when I see you in person. I can see Sarge is looking at me right now. 
and uh, he's waiting to belong to you, sir. So there you go. Major award. Not quite as sexy as the major award in Christmas Story, but uh, hey, Sarge has his own sex appeal. In the meantime, check him out, listeners. Optionpit.com is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. Back in a little bit with the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 